So, uh, hello everyone, welcome here. Uh, my name is Lukas Keller. I work and live in Stockholm, Sweden, and uh, I work in this for I work for PowerGU, a company that provides advanced energy management systems for real estate companies. A little bit about ourselves. We are a company who was incubated by Inno Energy, and very recently we got founded and next incorporated as an individual entity with uh, an investment of uh, five Swedish energy companies. And now we are on our own, so it's a little bit weird between Inno Energy and Geo. Just see it as the same for the purpose of this talk. And that's the only self marketing we're going to do today. Uh, I would like to talk today about three things recent developments in Sweden when it comes to energy data accessibility. Number two, um, how to create value from energy data. And three, two concrete use cases of companies in Sweden that are deriving value for the consumer from energy data. So, um, energy data accessibility in Sweden. Um, very similar to what the other countries are doing in Sweden, the Swedish uh, grid company is uh, creating an energy market data hub, which they uh, want to use for mainly market actors to have a more easy way of exchanging data. You can see that in the old times, those companies were literally writing letters to each other, requesting them to send a USB stick, you could say that, uh, to each other. So if they want to exchange data, if a customer is switching, all of those processes were very manual, very labor intensive, not standardized. So what the Swedish uh, um, transmission system operator, the Swedish uh, um, um, equivalent of, of, of Andre, what they have done is they have standardized all that process and all of that administrative data they're running through this energy market hub, which allows every company and market actor to access the data of the consumers there right away, and that is very likely to increase efficiency uh, of the whole system there. Mm -hmm. uh, small caveat though, um, the data that is in there is uh, smart meter centric, which is a huge and important step, but still the resolution is limited to one hour, or later on 15 minutes when the bidding period goes down. Um, it is also only focused on companies and market actors, so I'm not sure if that actually has at all an access point for the consumers directly. And um, yes, it only impacts the consumers themselves uh, secondarily. Mm -hmm. So that was an important and necessary step in the digitalization of the energy sector. But where do we go from here? What's the next step? How can we really unlock the value of energy data? So energy data beyond the smart meter. You might know smart meters are those things that you have in your house that are collecting one data point per hour from your energy consumption. And in PowerGU, we believe that in the future, it is going to be a more uh, gateway-based approach where you have an integrated gateway that does not only collect energy data from your smart meter, but from all energy-related devices in your house. For example, your real <coughs> uh, uh, smoke type production, um, your heating systems, heat pump settings, valves, etc., temperatures in your hot water storage, uh, batteries, laundry, mm -hmm. ventilation systems, and of course, your electric vehicle. So all of this data is enabled through modern IoT technologies, and we can see this data being useful for grid companies as well as uh, for third-party market actors. And really the dimension we are talking about this is the transition from one value per hour per customer to hundreds of data points that are primarily or secondarily energy related and with up to one second resolution. So we're speaking of an increase of factor hundred thousands times the amount of data that will be produced and available to, to consumers and, and companies active in the sector in the future once the legal and policy uh, aspects are sorted out, of course. Um, yes, however, there we hit some ground because this data is available technically, but there needs to be an effective framework around it, of course, uh, to make this data access smooth. Uh, stable and secure, and, and uh, to make sure that the customer is, of course, protected according to the GDPR. So, after GDPR, is it still possible to create consumer value from that? Um, I would like to, I would like to think that most of you have, in their lives, one way or the other, encountered that relation. The most valuable data is the most GDPR sensitive. If you're working in an industry, you probably know that relation more or less. If you now consider um, the cost of GDPR compliance, the question is, is your business case still viable afterwards, right? Um, is our, it is our understanding in power to you that for energy data, that is mostly the case, because energy data very seldomly falls into this very sensitive last category, which has the strongest restrictions on it in GDPR. So as long as we 
follow the normal GDPR rules and don't have any data that allows inference about sexual preferences, religion, or political affiliation, we are somewhat safe. Okay, so, but now we have this kind of high quality energy data and I guess our business case uh, still makes sense after GDPR compliance, what kind of values can it create from, from this high resolution energy data? The standard business models in energy are, are fourfold. Uh, flat out sell the data, use the data inside your own company to give it an operational boost, or uh, use the data to improve your product or offering for your consumers, or provide something like a marketing platform, forms of ads. Like those are the four standard basic um, um, data-driven business models, if, uh, if you like, how, how, how companies create value from data. And um, kind of Google and all those, those big players that kind of fall in here, right? Collect a lot of data from the consumer, provide targeted ads. Um, again, GPR sensitivity, selling data, very sensitive, but all the others also touch that one. Okay, let's get concrete. Let's see how they map to the energy data that, that we have available. So we have, uh, we've roughly segmented that in three different groups. Uh, energy data can be useful for grid companies, for commercial market actors like energy retailers, and third parties. And it's our understanding that for the grid companies, this is already very common today, that they're using the data that is available from the smart meters for, for planning purposes, for managing the grid very effectively. So, I don't know, the grid company's main product is making sure electricity can flow, right? So that's their product. So they're using this data to make sure that uh, um, their product is, is very effective. Um, secondarily, um, this is very much coming. Um, retail companies and energy sellers, for you as a consumer, they are using this data for tailored tariffs, customer trend prevention, all of those things, to provide a better customer experience, improve their product, and also improve their own operational processes inside to cut costs. And lastly, uh, the highest value we see if this data can be used for third parties, um, that is very much still coming, and mainly driven in our, mainly limited in our opinion, by um, the limited accessibility of this data for commercial actors. So, a commercial actor would very much like to have the data to provide added value to the consumer, but they cannot reach it for legal reasons, technical reasons, compatibility reasons, there's a lot of work to be done. Okay, so this third interesting bucket that we have here, um, that seems to be very, that seems to be mostly this marketing platform thing. So, finding some form of customized sales towards the, to, towards the customer, creating value from there. But can it be possible to um, create value for a customer beyond showing ads or other forms of utilizing <coughs> the data? And for this, I would like to show you two examples. It's two startups based in Stockholm, where Inno Energy is an investor. Um, they're really cool. Uh, I would really like, I'm, I'm really happy that I can introduce you to them. And they are creating direct value for the consumer from energy data today already. And they're Greenly and Watty. So let's start with number one. Greenly um, has found a way to gamify energy consumption. Very much what Andre was saying. Um, let me ask you. Everyone wants to beat their neighbor, at least where I'm from, you want to be the most energy efficient guy in your street. So what Greenly allows you as an app is it shows you how well your energy consumption compares to how the rest of the people in your street are. So you can rub it under the nose with your app and see, hey, look, I'm the most energy efficient guy in the street. So they do this kind of uh, social engineering approach where uh, um, they use social pressure to uh, reduce en people's energy consumption. Um, previously, in terms of their business model, they have white labeled that solution to energy companies as their form of user interface to the customer, and they recently pivoted and then are also active in selling energy. So you can have their Greenly app, you have the wonderful user interface, it looks extremely pretty and it's simple to use, and you can also change to them as a supplier. So that's their new business model and they're growing very fast in Sweden. It's the mobile first, digital only retail company. Number two, it's Wati. Wati also has a very interesting approach in that sense, and it's a bit more uh, uh, on the technical side. Wati provides uh, disaggregation of real-time energy consumption by means of a hardware. So literally, they hook up a physical little box to your electricity cables in, in, next to your smart meter, and they read out the data in very, very high resolution and process it. 
And what, is that, what that allows is, using I guess some Fourier transformation and a bit of machine learning, is to figure out roughly which are the current uh, systems in your house being running and being active, and showing you that via an app. So you can see via their app, uh, what is my stove running, how much is it consuming, is currently the iron on, my heat pump, um, all of those things. Because each of these have a unique energy signature and Wadi has managed to filter that information out of the real-time energy stream. And that is a value that is only possible to be created if you have very much high resolution data. Um, their business model is uh, kind of a subscription, you pay a monthly fee for that, and then you can have their little box. Um, and I, I would like to, to uh, kind of summarize their business model as peace of mind as a service, because you all know this thing, uh, um, have I left the stove on at home? Now you can check, right? You see, my stove is not on, I can go to holiday. So this one is a really, really good one. Um, I like Watty and Greenly a lot. Those two companies have shown us that even with today's limited technical accessibility and still somewhat uncertain legal landscape, you can create direct customer value from energy data today. My name is Lucas Keller and I'm happy to hear your questions afterwards.